Welcome back to Cox Connections, a program that provides up-to-date information on events that affect you, our customers. For four decades, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation has been committed to restoring the Bay's health. While they've had great success, the Bay is still a system dangerously out of balance. Here to tell us about the Chesapeake Bay Foundation's efforts to turn the tide and leave, leave a legacy of clean water for future generations is the Foundation's Hampton Roads Grassroots Coordinator, Tanner Council. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Anna. So tell us about the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, Tanner. Uh, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, or CBF, as it's commonly referred to, is um, the largest independent organization working solely to protect and restore Chesapeake Bay and all of her uh, many waterways. Um, founded in 1967, uh, we've been working hard year after year, decade after decade, for uh, strong, effective, science-based solutions uh, to the threats to Chesapeake Bay, primarily pollution and loss of habitat. And um, I understand that you've engaged public leaders in making co commitments? Absol absolutely. So we work through three primary approaches, um, restoration, education, and advocacy. So uh, we work really hard to bring th the public and our leaders on board with the mission. Um, perhaps one of our um, sort of the great umbrella which, under which we're all working now is the successful uh, creation of the Chesapeake uh, Clean Water Blueprint which is the large interstate plan by which we're all working to uh, restore the Chesapeake Bay by 2025. And I understand that the blueprint, there are some fundamental differences about this document than say past efforts at working together to clean and preserve the bay. Correct. Um, in previous agreements, which go all the way back to the Clean Water Act of 72, uh, by which progress has been made, but certainly we have not met the goals, um, they have all been voluntary. This um, agreement is between the U United States Environmental Protection Agency and the six Bay states, which include Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, et cetera, and DC. Um, and it is designed so that each of these states um, can equitably reduce the uh, pollution that's entering Chesapeake Bay. And under each state, each locality in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, for example, the city of Norfolk or the city of Virginia Beach, they have their own plans to contribute to the pollution reduction, ultimate pollution, pollution reduction goals. Uh, what's a little bit different about this plan is that there are two-year milestones. So every two years, we check back in and we look at the data and we see what has been done. And if, if everyone, the states and the localities, are, are um, living up to their agreement, part of the part of the agreement, and also that there are actual some real backstops this time, uh, so that there are um, incentives uh, and motivators to make sure that we, those goals are met. That we're all working together exactly. to, to save the bay. Why is that so important here in Hampton Roads? Well, if you look at a map of the Chesapeake Bay, you'll see that we're right here at the bottom of the bay. So we benefit from all of the productivity and all the economic benefits that the bay brings us. And we also reap um, the losses of pollution right here at the mouth of Chesapeake Bay. So um, it's really important that, first of all, that we do our, do our part, not only to uh, ensure that we continue to have those cultural, lifestyle, recreational, and economic benefits, but also that we set an example for the rest of the, the states you know, the more northerly states and westerly areas that don't have that direct connection to the bay, but yet are as much of a role in um, cleaning it up as, as we do. And what, what's the primary cause of pollution to the bay here? So there are lots of different pollutants and we can talk about them till we're blue in the face, but at Chesapeake Bay Foundation, we have narrowed it down based on the science to nitrogen and phosphorus, which are the primary ingredients in fertilizer, and sediment, fancy word for dirt. Those three pollutants are the primary stressors on Chesapeake Bay. The science tells us that if we can get our, a grip around those three pollutants, that the bay will be able to, um, it will be in a better state to self-sustain, uh, to regenerate, uh, and to support the aquatic life and the, and the resources that, that we all depend on. Tell me a little bit about some of the work that the Bay Foundation is doing here in Hampton Roads. So we're incredibly active down here on the education uh, component. We take thousands of students and teachers out every year for field experiences, visceral, hands-on experiences with the Bay. Um, we provide a lot of uh, edu adult education through seminars and engagement programs. 
um, uh, a lot of hands-on volunteer opportunities where you like can actually clean the bay day. like clean the bay day which is one of the largest programs in the state very simple program by which we clean up litter oyster restoration helping to put oysters back in the water shoreline restoration putting trees back so they're they're great filters for what's running off the land um, and we've also created the brock environmental center which are our new offices uh, in virginia beach which is a uh, international model for how to live sustainably um, with the resource and also houses all these great programs that we do. So is there a way that people here in Hampton Roads can help you with the work that you're doing? Absolutely. Um, there are opportunities for all experience levels and interest levels and age levels. Um, the best way to do it is to visit our website at cbf.org, uh, as in Chesapeake Bay Foundation, .org, and from there you can look on Take Action, and you can sign up and you will, you will um, be prompted to enter your preferences and what you're interested in so we can help customize your engagement. I also highly recommend everyone come to the Brock Environmental Center where they can see this incredible building and they can talk to CBF staff and find out ways to be directly involved with the, with the organization and, and the mission. Well, Tanner, thank you so much for being here with us today and thanks so much for the great work that CBF is doing. Thank you so much for that, Emma, and thanks for the opportunity today. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Cox Connections. As always, I want to personally thank you for choosing Cox Communications for your entertainment, information, and communication needs. We know you could have chosen another provider, but because you chose us, we pledge to be a friend you can trust. We promise to provide you with innovative products backed up by a talented local team of professionals that will help you stretch your dollar. And we promise to continue to make a difference in the Hampton Roads community. From all your friends and neighbors here at Cox, we thank you again for joining us on this edition of Cox Connections.